Greetings, welcome, and good day. You are now tuned into the 23rd episode of the Season Vet Podcast. I'm so happy you can make it to another chapter of the show. This week, we're joined by retired Coast Guard Lieutenant Commander Nicole Burgess. Lieutenant Commander Burgess enlisted in the Coast Guard in 1993 after being turned away from the Navy because, get this, they had already met their quota for the year for women recruits. <laughs> As an enlistee, she was a storekeeper who wrote number two on the service wide and ranked up twice in one year. Now, with a track record like that, it's no wonder why she went on to become an officer. She retired after over 26 years of service in 2020. Since her retirement, she's managed to stay busy by being an active member of the Order of the Eastern Star, Kappa Epsilon Psi, Sorority Incorporated, and being the eldest daughter in her family, which honestly is enough to keep any woman busy for the rest of her life. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Burgess goes by many names, but the most recent name she's acquired is one we'll acknowledge with this episode. And that's why I'm naming this episode Primetime. Friend! <laughs> hey, Fred, how's it going? It's good, sister. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, made a really good cup of coffee. I. If anybody listens to all the episodes, they know that uh, once upon a time, I made a really mediocre cup of coffee and it made me, I, I pissed myself off with how bad my coffee making skills were, but uh, y'all, I got it right today. So it's going to be a good episode. <laughs> yes, you, we're going to get it on and pop. <laughs> <laughs> got just enough creamer, just enough sugar. It's, it's wonderful. It's going to be a good day. <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> all right, friend, what is your connection to the surface? So I've been in the Coast Guard since, well, I'm retired now. But Congratulations. I, thank you, love. I've been affiliated, and I'm still affiliated, but I joined in 1993. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I did 26 plus years nice. with the U.S. Coast Guard. Nice. And to be honest with you, it was a great opportunity for me. Mm-hmm. I loved it when I joined because it got me out of a barrier that I was living in my life. I didn't come from a wealthy family. I lived in the projects. And I was like, I'm not going to live in the projects all my life. I'm, I'm going to do some battle with my life. And guess what? You did. And the military is what I had to do. You know, a lot of us do that. But to be honest with you, it made me the, the better person I am today. So, yeah. I know that's right. So if you don't mind my asking, Nicole, are you the first woman in your family to join the military? So I have other people that join, but they're like cousins from years ago. But as far as my immediate family, yes. You're the first woman in your family to join. Right. Yes. Right on, right on. The first woman and joined the Coast Guard. All right. I definitely the Coast Guard, yes. <laughs> <laughs> was the Coast Guard your first choice in branch of service? No, it wasn't, to be honest. I was just looking for an opportunity to get away, to do something better for my life. And the Navy was my first choice. So I went to the Navy recruiter, and at that year in 1993, they did not have quotas. They already met the quotas, excuse me, for women in the military. What? Um, you did not say that. They said... Yeah, they had the quota for women. Wait, they had a quota for women. They met it, and they were like, no more. We good. No what? More. They were good. And what? The we good on women over here, y'all. No more. <laughs> it was good, guy. It was good. Y'all good with women, but okay. So then the recruiter was like, okay, I got an option for you. And I still know the recruiter. He's still on my Facebook. We cool, you know. Okay. All these years. And he took me down the sidewalk in Greensboro, North Carolina. <laughs> and it, you know how smart, uh, most people, if they hear this interview, if they Google, they can do it all now. Um, <laughs> They were like, wow, that's a small town, right? <laughs> All he did was walk me two doors down to the Coast Guard office, and I was like, mm, okay, well, I'll go wherever I need to. And next thing you know, I was going to the Coast Guard. I know, that's right. <laughs> Look, that's recruiters helping recruiters out, all right? And I feel like everybody went in this situation, except oh, the yeah. Navy, because they weren't letting any more women in. <laughs> that is yeah, wild. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> also, after just a couple, talking to a few People that wanted to join the Navy first, but then joined other branches. The Navy was really wilding out in the early 90s. <laughs> they was real. They were funny. A very interesting branch. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, happy, I'm happy that the opportunity happened for me because I made some changes for the Coast Guard. A lot of people don't know because I'm an unsung hero in some aspects, but it's all right. I'm good with that. I, I love to be silent. No, no you... 
Hey, you go sing today, all right? <laughs> I, I want to hear the whole song, the extended version. <laughs> all right. Nicole, you said you spent 26 years in the Coast Guard? Yes, I did. All right, so what rank did you retire as? So I retired as a lieutenant commander. Come on! <laughs> yes! Yeah. yeah, started off as an E1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was my best part of my life when I was... I'm, I'll go into that later. But yeah, uh -huh. yeah the transition was different. I but know I, that's right. I was a lieutenant commander, yes. Come on. So how do you feel about your time in uniform? Does any particular time period stand out to you? A lot of time. Things have changed so much for the Coast Guard through my time that I've seen, even when I was a civilian worker. But I see people now, they don't have to deal with stuff I went through, which was crazy, like the hair thing and all this. <laughs> But it's okay. You know, I like change. I love change. Of course, of but, course. But I'm like, you know, when I was in uniform, I could just walk in the room and it didn't feel like I needed to be in that room. And these days, people walk in the room, <laughs> it's okay. But, <laughs> but you know, and I'll get into that later, but right on. I felt okay, you know, in uniform. You know, I was proud of myself because I did something different than my family members did. And I knew that I was going to be a beacon of light for a lot of people in my life. And I, I still try to stand true by that. I know that's right. I know that's right. All right. So, uh, Lieutenant Commander, Nicole. <laughs> now, listen, you earned that rank. I'm going to respect it. <laughs> hey, you, you can't see me right now, but, but I'm standing at attention. I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> like we some poets okay <laughs> <laughs> how do you think your experience could have been improved or could it have been i think as far as my experience is being improved as if i was treated the same as everybody else in the coast guard mm -hmm. a lot of people that's in the coast guard just we deal with a lot of things especially when we have color to our skin i'm just gonna be honest you are yeah um, yeah you're right you're right go ahead Ultimately, I have nothing to hide because of things I went through while serving. And I'm an open book because I feel like if I don't open my book and people can't read my pages, the next person can't learn. You're right. um, so ultimately, I feel as far as me and having something where something can be improved, I think ultimately the Coast Guard needs to have a revamp when it comes to leadership. <laughs> Could not agree more. Because nothing, nothing is going to change unless they change the people that's in leadership. Couldn't agree more. Tell me about a time when you experienced something, either good or bad, that you know to be unique to you because you are a black woman. So bad for me was when I was enlisted, I was a storekeeper. Okay. I was excited because, you know, when I, I had got out the coast, I had my son in 1995. And they had told me when I had my child that... I was at a small boat station back then, and they told me that uh, you didn't have a kid, a Coast Guard, he didn't come in your sea bag, okay? Wow. Um, and I'm like, no, he didn't, but he's my child. And right. he was making my child's going to come along with me, okay? So I had him, and nobody was going to take that from Nicole Burgess, okay? I heard so, that. And in the end of it all, I'm going to be honest with you, as far as an experience that's been bad, that was one that was bad for me, for someone to tell me what to have and what not to have. Because for me, as an African-American woman, no one's going to take anything from me, and they were not going to take my child from me. And that's why he's blessed to be here today. I know that's right. And what a thing to say to anybody. Your baby didn't come with your sea bag? I know they're not telling everybody that. I know they're not telling all the white girls that. I know they're not telling any men that. It mm -mm. What a what a very unique thing to hear. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it happened, I mean, even through things I went through when I had my son, even after I had him, I went to freaking, it's crazy, I went to, had to go to MAST. Mm -mm. Yes, ma'am, as an E3. No, indeed. Um, yes, ma'am. They took me to MAST. They were like basically saying, I was having my child, to be honest. My husband at the time was my boyfriend, and he's retired to Coast Guard. Basically told me I need to get back to the unit. And I was home visiting him in North Carolina, but it was like a five-hour drive. Mm -hmm. And so I was home in North Carolina, away from Cape, because I was at that time down in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. So Elizabeth City from Greensboro was like a five-hour drive. Okay. 
And they told me I had to get back to my duty station. But the, I was at the hospital. Girl. So then we called American Red Cross. American Red Cross called the unit and told them she can't travel. They was like, well, I don't care what you say. She got to get back here. What the fuck? So, oh, yes, ma'am. And an so E3? I, sto- wait, an E3? So you weren't even a storekeeper at the time? At the time, no, ma'am. I was an E3 when I had my baby. Yes. So a non rape a non-rate how quintessential to a unit is a non-rate to where they're ignoring a red cross command or well, request the powers who be is what the powers they are the powers were bullshit <laughs> <laughs> it was it was some bullshit okay and i'm going to be the one that i wish one day i could have this conversation because i'm going to write a book about this and people gonna know about my whole life one day but um and i've started the book but yeah my <laughs> My family went through a lot. They told me I couldn't have them. Then when I did have them. Wait a minute. They, hold on. Somebody in your chain of command told you you couldn't have a baby? Remember I told you about the sea bag? Girl. Remember about the sea bag? I'm about to jump yeah, through the... Yeah, What's their names? I'm, I'm about to go break ankles, Nicole. Oh, my God. I'm so mad at these I motherfuckers. Still, I still feel like breaking ankles, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> when we get through this interview, you're going to be like, well, she should have broke a lot of ankles. <laughs> Nicole, <laughs> nobody in your chain, com- nobody in your chain of command deserves ankles right now. I'm telling you right now, I'm breaking them and ripping them off. <laughs> they shouldn't. They, they should. don't deserve ankles, kneecaps, or clavicles, and I don't even know where the clavicle is. All right. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, sis. Because back in the day, if I knew what the power was that what the people have now, I would have been like, okay, I'm gonna tell y'all. Here you go. I'm coming through the room. You ready for it? Because back then, you didn't feel like you had a voice. You just did what the people said. In the 90s, someone was, wait, were these white guys? Absolutely. So some white guys were basically telling you, a black woman, to get an abortion. Basically, you don't have a kid, baby. You, you, it, didn't come, it didn't come in your seat bag. And I bet you they pro-life. I bet you they uh, family values. I bet you they conservatives. I bet you they on that side of the aisle. I'm talking about women shouldn't have abortions and shit, but they was advocating for you to have one. I bet you that. Yep. So God bet you that women have all them kids. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I only got one, you know. And think if I didn't have that one because somebody told me not to have it. <laughs> you had a out of spite. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I just showed pictures to that baby to everybody. <laughs> Look at the non-abortion, y'all. Look at what I look at what I did. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to move ever. I know that's right. <laughs> oh man, I hate your chain of command, um, and I hate that you had to go through that. So you got masted for basically just being pregnant. What? A, yeah. yeah, I mean literally because when I, the Red Cross called them, and then when I got back, because we still had to go down to Elizabeth City, North Carolina, my husband now, but my boyfriend at the time. His mother and him took me down there because I couldn't drive. So they were going to send a whole ambulance from Elizabeth City to Greensboro, which I told you was like five hours. Jesus. This is how this is how they felt like they wanted to control Nicole and my family and my life and my child. No, indeed. To get back to a unit for what? What am I doing? For what? Probably to what? Stand the fucking watch? <laughs> yeah. The, the sweep some deck. Girl, let me tell you. Well, I'm a sweep. I'm a sweep the uh, the basketball court because that's all they did back in the day. Girl. All we did was the basketball court and cut grass. With girl, I'm mm-hmm. they didn't need you. They just needed to fuck with you. All right. Mm-hmm, that's what happened. <laughs> that was it. But it was a good thing for me because it taught me valuable lessons. All right. Not to let people take or move you. <laughs> good. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm glad your spite baby is a grown, healthy adult person that loves you. <laughs> yeah, if I really can say, I, I need to just be real with you, huh? No, I'm just go <laughs> for it. <laughs> this interview will be like two or three hours. No. <laughs> do what you gotta do. I'll edit as needed. <laughs> okay, <so. laughs> uh, oh. But yeah, it was a, it was an experience for me. Um, it gave me lessons learned to teach my child how to be as an African-American male when he's with women and when he one day potentially have children, when he lives his life and how to treat people. I put that in him every day, you know, because just because you serve 
the people that you have in leadership sometimes are not good leaders. Mm -hmm. They only regurgitate or say things that they think is right. But if you do what you're doing from your heart, it's going to always be right. Right. Unless your heart's in the wrong place, like your chain of command. Also, okay. and fuck them again, just like for, for good measure. Fuck them again. <laughs> As an E3, nobody should have encountered that, you know? Right. As a woman, at, at no rank should you be encountering, number one, a chain of command that tells you to get rid of your child. Number two, a chain of command that will mask you for being sick while pregnant. And number three, you were probably on leave. Like you were probably on like legitimized leave. You asked to be gone and they approved it, right? Yeah, I was on leave, but the yeah. thing was, leave was going to expire. Okay. But I ended up having, I was in the hospital. Oh, so, you, went, so you were basically was. working up until your due date. Oh, I had my baby. I was still, I, I was working. Jesus. Yeah, so basically when they made me come back, when I told you that my husband and his mother took me back to the unit, yeah, I got back and I worked the day of, and then that night I went into labor. You were supposed to already be out on fucking maternity leave. Like, they were supposed to let you go, like, I think 30 days early or whatever. You were in no shape to be doing any kind of deck work, watch work, nothing. You should have been in the bed with your feet up. That's how the people do it now. But yeah, now, now, that's how they should have always been done. And, and I feel like there were women in the 90s that did get that treatment. It just wasn't you because you were a young black woman having a black baby. Oh, I believe that because they think, well, we know what history say about us. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be honest. I look at a lot of stories and I read a lot of history. And when I look at things, they think we don't have no pain, baby. Work them like move. Listen. The muse, work them. And I don't care. That part, I do want to stay in the interview, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, Lieutenant Commander Burgess. Will do. <laughs> Like, and we don't get the same privileges as other people. So it is what it is. Honestly, maternity leave is not even a privilege. It's a right. It's a right. Absolutely. So we don't get the same rights as other people. Okay. And back in the day, they just didn't, you know, things wasn't the same back in the day, right? Yeah. And they made changes. Thank God for the women now. It's so weird that we would consider the 90s back in the day. Also, I'm a millennial, so I don't feel like the 90s was that long ago, but I remember those days. But you're right. Back in the day, the 90s. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a while. Like, it's crazy, though. But back then, I was like, I'm having a child. I'm in a whole organization of people that don't look like me, but they're going to tell me what I need to do with my, my body and right. what I'm going to do with my life. And I was like, okay, I'm going to either go against, against the cuff, in which I did because I still have my child. Good. Thank and, God. I'm so happy you did. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have one because I yeah I wouldn't have one if not you know so I thank God for that and to be honest even after that situation it's been over now my son is 28 about 26 years ago I went to headquarters to work in DC and one of the people that was one of the people that was in command he never said not have it this OIC said not to but the XO XPO he was on okay with me having my son but he of course couldn't overpower the oic right first of all him being okay with you having a baby fuck his opinion it doesn't matter if he's okay with it or not it fuck him yeah but, see, <laughs> but I'll be it doesn't matter who's okay with you having a baby it's not theirs it's yours it's not theirs, but I was, what was kind of like made me come to one accord with it was that the xpo i seen him years later and he recognized me in the building after 26 years because he was a civilian then and he came to me and he said you know i'm proud of you that you had your child but he wasn't the oic the oic is the one told me my you didn't come to see that okay but the xpo came to me and said i'm so happy you had him okay and he was like i'm proud of you and all the accomplishments that you have overcame now did i take it all gracefully Mm, not really. You didn't have a reason to. <laughs> not really. Are you trying to save yourself? But anyway, because you know, even if you're in a leadership capacity, if that OIC is wrong, you as XPO should be piping in. Right. 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 So, mm -hmm. I ain't slow now. Right. 
<laughs> Give me this private apology. 20 years later, keep right. it, civilian boy. <laughs> keep it to yourself. Right. In fact, <laughs> in fact, you probably didn't even recognize him if, like, at a quick glance. You could have gone. You could have gone the rest of your life without having a contact with this dude. Life would have been still great. <laughs> like, yeah, I did, and I was just like, okay, why is this man telling me this now? You trying to bring all this? No, don't bring that bad energy over here. Right, <laughs> right. You could have kept that old boy. <laughs> oh lord. My goodness. All right. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Burgess, ma'am. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> When you brought complaints to your chain of command, do you feel that you were heard? No. Okay. No. No. That makes not sense. Ever. Not ever, 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 ever. Okay. That, that so, makes sense. I hope that that can be in there because then they be like, that's real, Nicole. That's <laughs> but anyway. We keep ever. it in, Nicole. We keep it in. <laughs> yeah, not ever, 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 ever. Because to be honest with you, a lot of people hide behind these facades and what they think that the majority want them to be. I never walk like that. I walk in the room just like who I am and who God made me to be, right? Mm -hmm. If I see something wrong with anybody, I don't care who it can, who it is. I'm going to say if it's right or wrong. But okay. when I brought things to my command, even when I was enlisted, like my enlisted days was great days for me because I was kind of a, I would say the person that I was going to bring it to whoever it was. If you wrong, you wrong, right? So That's what's up. I will give you one story when I was enlisted, and then I'm going to give you one that when I was an officer. Okay. okay. So when I was enlisted, I was over, back in the day, it was called the Human Resource Committee, the HRC Committee, right? I brought to the table to my XO at the time, and I was stationed in New Orleans, and I brought also to my CO a situation where a person of color had an issue with someone having a Confederate flag on their truck. <laughs> <laughs> and I had some people that looked like me. Well, that's their heritage. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, yeah, they was in the committee with me. Like, I was over, <laughs> and I was over the committee, though. I was the chair. Oh, my God. I hate it when we do that. I hate these Clarence Thomas clones. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ooh. And they're going to go against me for the people, the majority. But that's fine. But then the XO comes. The CO wasn't really on board like that because the XO was more engaged with this for some reason. I don't know what that was about. Well, I do know what it's about. And I'll get into that. <laughs> but he basically, when I went to him and told him about the problem, he was like, well, I don't have a problem with it. I'm like, well, I think that's a major issue. Because right. if someone feels that they're being threatened in any kind of way, we need to fix it. Right. And he was like, well, that is our heritage. Who the fuck is our? <laughs> you I fucking guess, racist. I don't know what they're, that's their heritage, I guess. Whose <laughs> heritage? <laughs> the, the side of the losers? Because the Confederacy lost. That's the whole reason I'm even talking to you right now. Because <laughs> they lost. <laughs> You know what's crazy? <laughs> the guy in the end, I had to keep on fighting, and I was arguing with the XO as an E5 then, because I was an E5 then. I like that you were so vocal as an E5. You better get it, Nicole. Because, girl, I, I'm standing that way now. That's why I didn't probably make it the <laughs> command. I didn't make it the 05, because they was, and that's, that's what's going to go into my officer's story when I told you I had one for that, too. <laughs> and I'm never going to change who I am because I don't need the rank. I just want to be heard. I heard that. A lot of people want the rank because they feel like they're going to be glorified for some reason. I don't know what that's about. Because <laughs> back in the day, I, I wanted to just make it the chief back in the day because I have respects for my chiefs more than, but that's just Nicole Burns speaking. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm real with that because ultimately when I went through the situation and the Confederate flag was happening on the base, you know, I went through something with that. I was getting ready to go to Officer Canada School and I was the HRC committee chair, and the XO, for some reason, he just went in on me. And um, he had people looking in my emails. Uh -uh. And that, oh, it was a lot, because I guess- Wait a I, minute, you reported racism, and the racists came for you. They came to me, girl, they came to me. They came to me. 
like we're, we're not gonna get this guy who's probably in the clan we're, we're not gonna get him what we're gonna get is this lady that reported him uh we're gonna check her emails and it's probably just some storekeeper shit <laughs> really and i'm gonna be real with you back in the day you know how they did them chain emails it was like you sent it to 10 people oh my gosh yes yeah so somebody sent me something i sent it to five to six people i didn't do 10 people <laughs> and i didn't even realize cause you know when you're young you just be like da, da, da. Yeah. so it was a lesson learned for me but i didn't send it to 10 so that was my caveat see i'm a little smart with that that crazy <laughs> You know, I don't want to say the bad words because I do like to say bad words sometimes. But <laughs> you, you've heard it. me talk during this interview, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have I'm, said "fuck your chain of command" no less than ten times. <laughs> I know, man, let's be real with it then. Okay, let's go and talk with it. Okay, so I didn't even send it to ten people, and I was like, "How did he know I sent this email?" Though I'm like, "How did the XO know?" So he tried to take away my experience to go to officer candidate school because i had been selected to go to officer candidate school because to be honest with you when i made sk i was number two on my list to make it get it you wrote today. number two in the service okay. line on the service line but get that, it that's a whole nother story so but i was selected to go to ocs right yes and it was a whole time frame which is crazy i wish this whole thing could be like a whole dialogue you'd be like okay this girl got a lot but <laughs> Um, this dude knew I was going to off to Kennedy school, right? Yes. He was like, okay, what can I do next to her? Cause she want to bring this bull crap bullshit in up to us about this Confederate flag. Right. So I guess he got into my emails because he brought this thing up. Well, we saw you sent this chain email. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. I what, said, you know, the I Confederate flag was right there on the truck in plain view for everybody to see. They dug in your email and tried to find something. And the only thing that could be found was a goddamn chain letter <laughs> that you didn't even, <laughs> that you didn't even adhere to properly. <laughs> I didn't even do 10 people. So, cause you know, back in the day, the 10 people on the chain, right? <laughs> and it's funny now, right? It's kind of funny. Cause you be like, this is how they come out to people. And I feel so bad for these young folks now. Cause this is what they go through. And yeah. they don't even know how to like have a shield up to fight the battles. Mm. They just get ran over. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I wasn't getting ran over. Good. I said, Look, what we going to do is I need a captain's call. Cause what you ain't going to do is take my OCS away from I me. I know that's right. I know that's right. So then they call the captain's call. I had to go in here with this O six as a little old E five. <laughs> And I was like, I'm not understanding why your XO is so engaged in trying to like, I can't go to OCS for an email. I'm not understanding. I said, I need to talk to somebody else, even if I got to go beyond you. Right. Right. And he was like, oh, no, we're going to make it work because I don't need you to leave outside the chain. The next thing you know, I was leaving for OCS and they let that thing go. Mm -hmm. And the same man, though, after this, I'm beyond. Her. This is how God works. Same man that did that to me years later after I graduated from Officer Canada School, he sent the email out with some women with titties. Uh uh. Out. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Hold. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. I hate him. Yes, he did. He sent the whole email out. And, and to be honest with you, it was a chief that she went out there on the edge. And she let the people know that he sent that email out. And she was of African-American descent. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Good. And I'm happy, I'm happy he got his dag on everything back he tried to do to an African-American person back on his behind pots. Period. Good. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad that he got brought to light. But to be yeah. honest, I think we both know he retired with all his benefits. He did, but that ain't right either. But oh. Yeah. <laughs> Trash always gets away with being trash. It's 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 so it's it's deflating. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? It's like it how do these people of the majority not being rude to anything? We have to fight so hard just to be inclusive. Right. Right. But then you just walk through the room and they good. I don't understand it. I never will. Confidence and mediocrity. What a combination. Yeah, they get oh, they confident in the mother and they can lie right in your face real good, looking in your eyes and everything. Right. <laughs> And at that point in time, they believe their own lies. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're going to be believed because 
they look like. But uh huh. And then as an officer. Come on. Oh, this story. Yeah, girl. <laughs> Wait, should I have had wine instead of coffee? Cause yeah, you might need a whole, you might need a Bashon shot. <laughs> Wait, See, let me pause the recording so I can go pour up some Jack Daniels. I'll be right. I'm kidding. <laughs> but to be honest with you, this is real combo, and people need to hear it because it actually is kind of therapeutic, right? Mm-hmm. Because we got all kinds of people that have issues, but they're scared to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand what they're scared of. What's somebody going to do to you? Nothing. Mm-mm. Right? Right. What can they do to you? Nothing. you going to sit back and be quiet for what? You know, they don't sit back and be quiet. No. When they take care of their village and whatever else they got in their lives, they're going to speak up. They're going to call their congressmen. They're going to do what they need to take care of theirs. They don't never <laughs> shut up. <laughs> they're going to keep going, baby. <laughs> 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 but the officer thing for me, and this is why I think I did not make 05. Okay. I was in Miami, Florida, working in the command center. I made a change for my life because what happened was I didn't have a background in, you know, boating or I didn't do the operation, none of that. I was kind of like a HR recruiting type SK. You know, I stayed in that kind of regimen, right? Mm-hmm. But my husband at the time, he was getting stationed in Miami. And so the detail and all them, well. Hold on. Your husband's an officer, right? Too, right? Well, he's retired. Yeah, he's retired. He was a retired officer? He is a retired officer, yes. Come on, black power couple. <laughs> Look, don't nobody talk about us, though, because we're we on another cuff for the people. Uh-huh. Anyway. <laughs> because we real, and some people are just fake, and I'm, I'm, I don't like fake folks. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> So, as far as the officer part of me, what happened, I'm going to be real, in Miami, at that time of year, I got to Miami, I think it was 2012, yeah. So, basically what happened, I got black of, the Black and Government Award back then. Mm-hmm. I got nominated for Dorothy Stratton Award that year. Nice. I got a STEM Award that same year. Oh, black women in STEM? I, I had so much stuff going on. Went to this command. I didn't have a background in like the command center operations, but I was good with being diverse because I'm the type, I'm a dip anywhere. I can, I think I can learn anything as long as you give me a chance. Right on. Right. Yeah. So I went there because at the time they didn't have no, they claimed, now I ain't going to say they didn't, they claimed they didn't have nowhere to put me. Which, you know, they, they, <laughs> they always got places they can put you, right? Right. But they put me in this, billet because my husband was stationed in Miami as well and I went there on the cup and I said like, I'm just going to take this chance I said I, I don't feel good about it and I had some my into spirit I said I'm I think it's open to go and I felt it I'm just going to be honest with you I go with my intuition and I went in there but I learned things and didn't know nothing about all this operational stuff ever like you know calling out to the boats that's out doing drug ops and all this I never had that background but I learned it. It just took me maybe two more months, three months longer than people that already had the experience. Right, right, right. So I went to this. That's whole still not bad, by the way. It's not right, but hmm, it was to them. <laughs> so the old six that was there, he just went in on me for some reason. I'm not understanding why you're not getting it. Every time I was briefing or had some, he all he would just always antagonize me and stand. Be, I mean. We had issues even at one point. I had to put an EEO on this guy. And when I had an EEO on him, he basically, even though he knew I had an EEO, I still had to work in that environment. Wait, you didn't get moved with an EEO complaint? Yes. They still had me working with this man, even with an EEO in. Wow. And I'm sitting there briefing, and he knew I had an EEO in, and would come stand right beside Mm -mm. me. Yes. Stand right beside me while I am briefing. Intimidation tactics. He wanted to let you know that that EEO didn't mean shit to him. And then when, oh, they know it's some fake stuff. It's shit. It's fake shit. Yeah. Right. So literally me sitting there briefing, 
He's standing there to intimidate. He's trying to make, make me feel low and then laugh with his buddies around the room because I'm the only brown person briefing. And, you know, I'm probably the only brown person in the room, which was the case. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there like, I can't believe all these people in here are going along with this. But I have a job to do. So I can't look like I'm going to break down. What you're going to know is I'm a strong black woman. All right. So I still briefed, but I still felt some kind of way, which to me is mentally, you know, it makes you feel like you're going into like, uh, you're being attacked, right? Right, right. I was feeling like I was attacked, but I had no choice because guess what? You signed that contract. You put that hand up and you did that oath, right? Right, So right. you got to do what you got to do. But in the end, this dude went after me after having all these awards. He knew all this and that. He never congratulated me when I got to that unit, when I he found out, because that was when I first reported that. He knew I got the uh, nomination for Dorothy Strat. He knew I had the Blacks in Government Award. He knew I had the STEM Award. He never said it in front of the chain of command in front of the peers and none of that and people enlisted in the room as a at the time lieutenant burgess never said nothing to these people nobody knew they only heard me say it because i would talk to some of my people in there and tell them you know you can do this you can do that showing them things that they can do to get these awards right right in the end this dude just kept going in going in he tried to say i got selected for 04 okay. while i was there he called OPM to try to get me taken off the list. To what the make fuck it- is wrong with this dude? This man was jealous of you. Like he saw his shooting star and he wanted to shoot it down. Well, he told me he believes in being an intrusive leader. He believed in being a racist. That's it. So this intrusive leader, I don't like the word intrusive. I don't because when you intrude on something, it means you're trying to take over it. Mm-hmm. Or you're trying to be too engaged in something because literally we all as African-Americans been intruded on all our lives. The whole time. Yes. So why do we want someone to intrude on anything with us? Hell, your first command tried to intrude on your pregnancy. That part. <laughs> so I felt like, you know what? I got to get the heck out of here. Whoop the whoop. Then he gave me a bad eval. <laughs> Basically, OER. You know, yeah. officer. He gave me a three. No UCMJ, no nothing. He just had his perspective, his thoughts, his perceptions of Nicole. You know, let's go ahead and what's going to happen? You can go ahead and fight it. That's part of the EO process, too, what I had to put in. It's about the eval. Mm -hmm. What you going to do, Miss Burgess? See, because they already know the game. The game's real. Nothing's going to happen. You know, if you ain't got one person that's going to speak for you, ain't nothing going to happen for you. He just had it out for you for no reason. Was he jealous? (laughs) Was was he short and bald? Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to take that part out. That's an attack of a short, bald guys. <laughs> they, they, that was a stray. I'm sorry, short, bald guys. Y'all didn't deserve that. <laughs> but he, no, he actually right. He just had big legs at the bottom. But yeah. He, <laughs> he was calf heavy. <laughs> yeah, he like a little bitch. But <laughs> you little brick, say, like, you little brick body, body bitch. <laughs> it don't matter like let the people be great right if you was a if you a true leader even if it took me two three months later than a person i already had the experience you would be like i'm going to invest in that person because they don't even have the background but guess what they in here striving to try to get it no he didn't want to he didn't want to hear none of that right he was like and i didn't i told them i didn't want you to come here because you didn't have the background, but they still let you come here because, oh, you think you should be here because your husband and you need to be co-located? Oh, it was a lot going on. Yeah. So he hated black women. He doesn't like black love. Uh, he saw a shooting star. This dude, he ain't got shit else to do. <laughs> even one This man time, has no friends. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. This is going to make you laugh because you need to laugh sometime in life, right? Thank you. But all this stuff that he has and talk about people... And I used to watch some of the enlisted people come on the commands of the floor. He had one guy, he had a little bit of hair on his face one day. He made him leave the whole watch floor to go home and shave. But then you got people coming into the command center that don't look at, does not brown. Well, have color to them. Mm-hmm. And without being ready for the watch, with flip flops on and briefing. Uh-uh. <laughs> and I'm sitting like, how is this popping off? This ain't how we work. 
If I don't give a damn if it was in a freaking organization that wasn't the Coast Guard. In a corporate America, you let anybody oh, come in there with some flip flops. No, and indeed. You get out the room, baby. You come back when you're ready. Right? right. But then this man just got a little bit of hair, but he over there working a desk or a freaking a command center. And you're going to say it's okay to let him leave to go shave. To get a little hair off his thing, off his face. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me. It doesn't. <laughs> but the person that had flip flops ain't of color, though. You get what I'm talking about? Look, black people are the only people getting policed. We're the only ones that have to, that absolutely have to meet the standard 100% of the time. All the time. <laughs> All the time. In fact, the standard is only for us. <laughs> All the time. All the time. All the time. Look, if black men couldn't grow hair out of their face, there wouldn't even be a shaving rule. (laughs) Tell them again, sis. (laughs) They will have heavy beards and everything. Right. They'll be over there. Look, you don't never know what they're going to do. Drinking beers at the commands and the watch flow, whatever. Right. Because you know back in the day they did that thing. Absolutely. But now they make the standard to them again. I'm tired of the standards. I don't like the standards. <laughs> All right, we're the only ones being held to it. I don't. I don't blame you. <laughs> standards. What y'all? What y'all standards is? That's what. That's gonna make a book for y'all standards. Right. Then put it in the SOP. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh. <laughs> My goodness. You know I'm unique, but I'm sorry. You really are. <laughs> don't apologize. <laughs> You, um, all right. Lieutenant Commander Burgess, ma'am. Oh, here you go. Right. Respectfully request to know. <laughs> At the beginning of your career, when you needed guidance and mentorship, were those resources provided for you or did you have to seek them out? I had to seek them out for myself. Okay. I did have some people that I will have to give gratitude and grace to that helped me even when I was an officer, but most of that came from the enlisted workforce. Didn't get it from the officer workforce. I'm just going to be honest. Makes sense. Most most of the things that happened was from the people that really do the work. And they were the ones that was there to guide me and support me. And it is mainly the chief's mess that always had my back. So, and I'm getting emotional a little bit with that, but (laughs) when you uh, have situations, um, what people say, you always welcome into the chief's mess. <laughs> to me, that means everything. Because when you got those other people that get these little shoulder boards on their shoulders, baby, they think they blinging, and they feel like they <laughs> they stepping out on the grace of whatever and their own and nothing else matters. To me, all, the rank don't freaking matter. What matters is who you are as a person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As far as mentorship and guidance, I did get that from the office, well, the chief's mess. And I got maybe one officer, which is my husband, that supported me. <laughs> I'm just going to have to give him his grace, too, because without him, I wouldn't be who I am today either, because he had to, like, look, sometimes pick me up when I was going through things with people that didn't look like me in the Coast Guard. So I have to give him his because everything I went through, he had to deal with especially living in a house together. So. Right on, right on. It's good that you went home to some support. It, it can't always be battles and wars. You got to have a, a place that's peaceful. It's good that you had oh. a place of peace. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was blessed to have someone that just let me be who I am, great, you know, gratefully who I am and didn't judge me because, you know, some people, oh, you can't do this because, you know, you they feel like they're their rank and they don't want you to make them look a certain way. Nah, my husband is not that type of person. He was like, you be who you are. <laughs> but this is who you are, right? Right on. You know, he lives his own life, and I live mine when it comes to your career. Because, you know, we have our own paths. And that's what I think about him. Because he had to deal with a lot just seeing me go through experiences with people that don't look like me in the Coast Guard. He never had to really encounter things that I had to encounter personally but he had to deal with it because he saw me going through it Mm. yeah as a woman right on right on glad you had a support system good for you good for you yeah wait are you actually crying i mean i'm gonna be honest with you it did bring me a little bit to the tears i'm gonna tell you right there (laughs) i don't i'm kind of i think i'm gangster 
or something. <laughs> Nicole, we agreed before we started recording that you were a thug. Like, what is this? T-H-U-G. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you good. You good. I'm crazy. But anyway, but I love because the energy is this. You got to laugh all your life, right? It's not. You be crazy. I mean, you got to let the things go. You're right. You know? You're right. Mm-hmm. But this interview is giving me good joy because I'm like, woo! <laughs> Girl, you got a whole thing you don't even know. This is freaking a uh, counseling session. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, here's a good one. All right. Have you been able to make friends with other Black Lady veterans? Are you purposeful about building your village? So I do believe, and I do have a few. Okay. I really haven't really, I don't really, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm the type of person for me, I don't like to take my issues to people. Okay. But I do like to, if I have something that I can make work with others, I try to give them knowledge on it, right? Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of calls from a lot of, people that are starting off in their career as far as even enlisted still to today, even though I'm retired <laughs> and then still get people that are officers that reach out to me. That's kind of the younger, a lot of people that get to another level. I, I think they forget what is supposed to be about because now they're on a whole different track, but that's okay. But I'm never going to be that person. But, back on what you asked I really as far as saying with friends I have I do have a lot of friends that are lady veterans I'm part of this organization called key okay it's called Kappa Epsilon Psi Military Sorority Incorporated okay Um, and it's a bunch of military women shouts out to key good for you all right he is a lot of african-american whatever it's all colors all branches coast guard not many um (laughs) but it's mostly dod to be honest (laughs) and it's a great network of women that you know we group chat each other we put like inspirational words out to each other um they have sessions a lot of times and we get together to do mentorship and this active duty retired and even um, people that's in the federal government, the civilians, they just come together and have a good time to talk about their experiences while they're serving, while they served, or, you know, what have you. So I, I am part of that. And as far as friends, I do, like, have Master Chiefs. That's my good friends. I love them to the death for me. Um, I have mostly, I'm going to be honest with y'all, and most people ain't going to get this because they'll be like, what? Most of the people that mean something to me, um, is from the E field, like the enlisted field. And um I get that. That's where you started. That's what's yeah. not to get now. <laughs> I can't take that from how I feel because nobody's gonna take that from me. And I think that's why sometimes I was kinda like the one that was out to the side a little bit because I just didn't do all the things that some of the other people did and hanging out with others, I would always still hang out with people that was there for me but um and there's one person i'll talk about later (laughs) but yeah (laughs) wait the person we're gonna talk about later because i i like to bring this lady's name up is it lisa spotwood because i love her it it is and i'm gonna tell you now you got me emotional again (laughs) look look here thug all right (laughs) this is very ungangster of you (laughs) personally met her but you know what no no we have met now oh okay when I first like you know I had invited her to an event Mm -hmm. and it was crazy but I knew her because of course you know because she leaves the spot wood that's why or you heard me (laughs) (laughs) that lady got sea babies she ain't even met yet (laughs) tell the whole room what it's about (laughs) we just need to have a whole like we need to get her look on this look, the, look, we need to have a whole. We need to make her a plaque. Look, the vet podcast. Please, the vet podcast. 
Like, it might it might go down like that. You never know. She's got an episode, but like, but we might. <laughs> She wasn't don't playing play. with me during the episode. Like, I got a couple of inboxes. Like, ah, Master Chief, they checked you. Like, yeah, you're right. She did. She checked me during the interview. All right, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> and she, I mean, and she's an amazing woman. Like, and to the day, like, when I see her, and she's still out here doing things for people that serve and not serving. And then she has her issues sometimes, you know. It just gives me, like, it makes me feel so warm in my heart to see someone like her to still out here. She came to my son's when he got promoted to Lieutenant JG on the boat down yeah. in um, Suffolk. And I reached out to some people that was my friends. They didn't even come, mm. but she came. <laughs> and I'm um, putting emphasis on she came. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he was on the Laguerre at the time, and that's one of her, you know, that was one of her babies, the Laguerre. That's kind of what <laughs> So, and it was kind of like for me monumental to see that, you know, she came on the boat, she saw things that my, you know, we talked offline about some stuff. For her to just be there, to be honest, was all that I could ask for from God because she really was there for a reason. Yeah, it wasn't there just to show face. Right. You know, some people just come to show face with no grace. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's not her. She's a real lady. She's a real yeah. one. Is. she's a real one and she's gonna be blessed and i'm gonna tell you if one person needs something in this world we all should be doing something for her period, <laughs> period. <laughs> <laughs> look hey you know i talk to her like every other day like either she's calling me or i'm calling her neither one of us are in the coast guard anymore yo this lady ripping at me a new one every other conversation <laughs> oh she's gonna rip in you know, like <laughs> If she don't like them, you move <laughs> But the thing is, I keep giving her reasons to get at me. <laughs> it's my own fault. I be walking right into the ripping. <laughs> you like to push the button? I, I, I need to see if she still got it. <laughs> like, is she going to check me on this? Let me see. <laughs> she, she is that type of person, like, but she's here for a reason. You know, and she got the masses. It's not just even just people. Of, she got everybody that love her. Facts. Facts. You know, it's crazy, but I love that. I love that. And it's because who she is genuinely. She is a genuine person. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> and I know she go hear this too. <laughs> oh, nah. She like to stag on the cold. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she don't even know I really... I mean, I see her and I watch her page and stuff and I be watching her daughter and I'm like, ah, oh, that just give me. She's a woman of the people. Yeah. I don't know what it, I told my son, I'm like, this is how, if I had a daughter, I'm going to tell you something, man, we'll be in photo shoots like they be taking photos. I'm like, ah. A hundred percent. Hey, Nicole, we friends now. <laughs> yeah, ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Nicole, do you feel that the way you were treated improved with rank? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just straightforward. No hesitation. No. 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 I mean, from day one to day end. I think it's just because of what I look like, especially while serving in the Coast Guard. I mean, if I didn't have this melatonin to my skin and I did everything that I've done, especially if I could have went back from everything I've done for the Coast Guard, you would be like, wow. I mean, going back one more time, when I was even enlisted, I did more as an officer. I believe it. I believe it. I'm going to be honest with you. I had a whole senator in New Orleans to come to a thing I had did for the HRC committee. I put together all by myself. I had a senator. I had the Blackfoot Indians. I had the Zulu people come to the committee. I did, I set this up all by myself. Mm. Senator went to the, she went to, her name was Paula Hearns at the time. She went to my XO and CO and said, I will have her work for me any day. Nice. And I was the E5 back then. So, 
that's why when I say my story about being an O3 in that command center and somebody telling me, oh, you are not up to par and he trying to give me a three on an eval Mm -mm. and (laughs) I did way more than probably half of y'all. Y'all just went to the CGA, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Y'all just went to the CGA. Well, if if it's anything about them Coast Guard Academy grads, they stick together and they don't do nothing. (laughs) Stick, then, they good for doing nothing, but also sticking together. Stick together. <laughs> Let's be lazy together. <laughs> yeah, they good, you know? Hold on, except for you, Olivia Grant Cream. You don't. You the only one that's ever did something out of the academy. Hey, she was one of my episodes. I and she graduated from the academy. I got to shout her out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, don't get it twisted. Like she's I mean, she's a good one though. Like she was like the I want to say the first or second black uh, uh, woman engineer in the coast Guard, or engineer officer in the coast guard, something like that. She, she, Olivia Which Grant Cream. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even Andrea um, Parker Smith. Like, you know, Andrea Smith? Parker. Uh, I don't. No. Help me no, out. And, Andrea, she's, she's, she's Coast Guard Academy, too. And she's a very, I have to give her her props. Just Google her a little bit. She's a, now, she just went through a lot of things recently, too. And it's on my spirit to talk about it, but. She just had a, a fire in her home here in Lorton, Virginia area, and her family lost everything. But wait, she, I she, might be Facebook friends with her because yeah, I, I, this story sounds very, very familiar. Yeah, it just happened this past week. Yeah, okay, I think I am fr- Facebook friends with her. So, but Andrea, she's amazing. Um, I have to give her her props. She's Coast Guard Academy as well. I mean, we got some good. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. They had to, Everybody have to do what they got to do to get what they got to get. Look, we just look, we just trying to strive in life, right? <laughs> right. Basically, <laughs> hey, the sisters that came out of the Coast Guard Academy, it wasn't an easy, uh, it wasn't an easy feat for them. So we're not talking about y'all when we say uh, they're lazy. No. <laughs> we we know y'all worked. <laughs> yeah, definitely had to work to, to even get to that part, right? Right. <laughs> even though they make, they want to make quotas, you know. You right. Know. Not the Navy. They met their quota. <laughs> I'm and never going. Nicole, I am never going to get over that. They were like, we got enough women. Go away. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was it. Like me. I was just trying to get away from the project. Girl. <laughs> they were like, men only from now <laughs> for the next year or so. No, no more of you ladies. We good. Oh, my God. Oh, crazy. That is... That is the Navy. All right. <laughs> so the way you were treated did not improve with rank. And no. it, and it is fair to assess that it's because you're a black woman, no matter what rank you are. So how much improvement can there really be? I don't think no improvement is going to happen until the Coast Guard make an overhaul of something. Back in the day, I used to always tell them how they have them safety stand downs. Yes. They need to do a whole leadership stand down. Lord. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. You go stand down the whole Coast Guard trying to do that. <laughs> but you know what? To me, to be honest, I mean, look what's happening now. I mean, they still on um, issues about people getting treated unfairly. Why are we still living in this kind of day? Right now, we in 2020. What? Four. And we still, mm-hmm. what? And, and then racism. And why is the Coast Guard the only branch of military you hear always out there and out there in the political regime with dealing with something with this? <laughs> Now, I do know that other branches have it. Okay? Right, right, right. But for us to be such a small organization, why are we out there like that? It's because. Because the problems are condensed because we're so small. <laughs> we small, but we need more people that look like us to be out there to be not onesies and twosies. Right, right, right. Don't get, why y'all can't retain us? Lord, that part. <laughs> it's a reason why, because you don't want to retain us. Because if you wanted to, you would invest in us. Right. They right. don't invest. They and get you in, take that number, and then when that number's over, they let you go, and they start treating you crazy. See? And look, those retention rates, those poor retention rates are the reason why everybody in the Coast Guard has 10 and 15 jobs. You can't keep people because you don't treat them right. You don't treat them right, and they leave. And they leave, and the people that do stay now have an extra job to do because that person that could have been doing that job is gone. And I'll be honest with you, we some hard work. I mean, when we put our all in, we put our all in. Just like them, a lot of, I mean, just being honest, most people that join something, it's for a reason. Yeah. But 
to be honest with you, our stories are a little different than the majority a lot of times. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, most of the people that's of the majority, they come into the Coast Guard because what? They got family backgrounds mm-hmm. or, you know, or something like that. Look, with us, it's a opportunity most of the time. We like, we getting away. Right. So, and which is a sad story, yeah. but it can also be a great story if the mm-hmm. people that was in positions make their story be great. But they forget that. That's why the Coast Guard don't have many people at this point that is of color to make it to the hierarchy that we should be. Right now, we got one person that's going to make history, okay? It and it, have been long hold on, and it took her over 200 years to do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and now they want to flag that out here to the universe. Because, oh, the Coast Guard now is great. No, the Coast Guard should have been doing this a long time ago. Right. It's been a whole bunch of sheroes out here. Right. And look, she deserves everything that she's getting. But there were oh, women I, but there were women before her that deserved that as well. Yes. Black women before her that deserved that as well. So we're, we oh. we are just to be clear, we are very proud of oh, Ad, yeah. El Admiral Merchant. We yeah. we stand this this podcast is an Admiral Merchant stand account. Yeah, yeah we good with that. But right. It, it should have been before. Right. You know, and not saying nothing bad with what's happening now. I'm so proud to even see it happen in existence. Look, like, look how long it took us to get a black president. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, when are we going to make a change in the whole America? Like, yo, get out these damn times of being sambos and stuff. Stop with this and stop being, you know, with these people that's not of color, being judgmental of people of color. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. all bleed the same color. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Red. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so that's the code on her soundboard. But uh, but the problem is, they think when we bleed, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, it don't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> they can take all the pain. Right. <laughs> oh, they can be like, she got a ghetto uh, podcast today. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't. Hey, this is not for them. This is for us. <laughs> that's the truth. There you mm-hmm. go. I I think my core demographic are uh, is people that look like you and I. Yes, ma'am. So it don't uh, matter. Honestly, <laughs> um, before last week's episode, I was pretty sure only three black men were listening to this podcast. And now I'm my number's up to four for sure. <laughs> but see, why the people ain't on here? See, we no, it, it, I'm not. I'm not even offended. Like it's it's fine. Um, it, it's have- I know specifically the three gentlemen, uh, the three black men. Uh, shouts out to you, Master Chief Tyrone Anderson. Shouts out to you, Master Chief uh, Thomas Stukes. And shouts out to you, Oslong. Oslong Worth. <laughs> Where my homeboy at? What grade eight at? I need grade eight on this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, on, but I appreciate all my listeners, all right? Like, let me be very clear. I appreciate uh-uh. all y'all. <laughs> well, great. I'm going to be like grade eight. Your, your girl Hollywood is on here. <laughs> Wait, that's your nickname? Nicole. <laughs> What's up? Make you laugh. Is that your nickname for it? Your nickname is Hollywood. So I'm gonna husband, knock all this over. <laughs> they used to call me Hollywood Cole because you know that song by Outkast. I know you ain't gonna put this on here, hopefully, but <laughs> I'm not, I, we can talk about it. <laughs> you know, cool I'm song keeping song. it down, Nicole. <laughs> we in there. Who else wanna fuck with Hollywood Cole? <laughs> And then my sorority with the military sorority, they gave me prime time. Lord have mercy. Uh-huh. I so know you a character in real life, Nicole. <laughs> but look, oh, people I are am. giving you those for nicknames. I know you a character. Oh, I am. I'm too much. <laughs> you know that song she be doing too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at my wrist. I got time today. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> Mm. I was feeling some kind of way. I said, I hope she don't think I'm... Because I was like, I'm going to get on this podcast. But I was like, I hope my sister know she got a whole different species. <laughs> <laughs> Look, black women are not a monolith. I expect us to be very different. Uh, Di- we, we, all of these interviews are supposed to differentiate from, from interview to interview. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for bringing your authentic self. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... um. Hollywood. <laughs> oh yeah, bring it to the room. Bring it to the room. <laughs> hey Hollywood. 
has there ever been a tough situation where you helped another sister out or a situation where another sister helped you out? So I will say this one is a little emotional for me too. It's a lady. She's still on Coast Guard. When I was in recruiting command, I was over all the accession programs, including c And at the time, I was a lieutenant. And she was a brand new c student. And her father was going, he was, he was finna transition, so he was in hospice. And she was in a whole nother state. And I was trying to figure out a way where, because it's, it's costly, like, to move, right? And right, yeah. So I reached out to, at the time, it was PSC. Yeah, PSC, because she was still enlisted as a C-SPY, you know, and, you know. So I had reached out to them, and I was like, what can we do to assist this member to, you know, at least because she was the only child for her, you know, her father. Mm-hmm. And I end up um, getting her a uh, non-cost move. Come on. And um, that's how one of the things I got put in for the Dorothy Stratton Award, because... I did a whole bunch of research to make sure this young lady um, was able to go be with her father his last days. It was non cost to her. The Coast Guard paid for it. So for me, that was one thing that it was tough because I didn't know how to do it, but I prayed about it and it happened. And I was being very strong about it because I went to my, at the time, CO and XO. I said, this is the right thing to do for someone. She is his only child. And me personally, I feel like if we're investing in something, we should invest in someone too. Mm -hmm. And it happened. And she was able to be out in the area and continue with her C-SPY, you know, going to school and doing stuff out there. And she was able to see her dad transition. She probably heard that she'd be like, oh, Nicole, here she go. Yeah. And I helped her with that process. So... Yeah, it's kind of emotional for me because I was like, I didn't know if it was going to happen. But I was like, I know if I was in that situation, I would want somebody to try to help me. So it happened. So by the grace of God, um, she was able to be out there with um, her father while he transitioned. And now she's still, at this time, she's old four. Nice. Nicole, thank you. Look, you did the research that it took to help this young lady out. And you didn't even have to do that. You helped this young lady be with her. Yeah, it was I, a lot. Yeah. Was like, Don't have me over here crying. Shit. Girl, we're gonna be an emotional <laughs> No, I'm an actual thug, Nicole. I oh. <laughs> I don't really cry. <laughs> I'm I'm true to this, not new to this. <laughs> but yeah, she was she was able to be with him his last days and I was like, how does this happen? Because normally you know that don't happen for us. Right. 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 But but it happened, so, and now to just see her still, like, transitioning through this service and making rank, I'm like... And she's I an think. 04. She's doing good. And she's an 04 right now, yeah. Good. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to let you finish crying. I'm okay. Hey! <laughs> look, hey! Look, you know, in life, though, you know how, like, as far as our, like, culture in this Coast Guard? Mm-hmm all looked out for each other like that do you know how we all can be progressing because like if if somebody did something to one of us that didn't look like us and we spoke up or we assisted do you know how strong we could be in this organization overall period yeah 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 but a lot of times people so scared that they're gonna lose a paycheck or yeah they scared that you know they're gonna be treated different repercussions yeah you're afraid of retaliation. Mm-hmm. You're going to be treated that way anyway. Right. Right. <laughs> and that's the point we need to get across. You were going to be treated poorly regardless. So with the poor treatment you were already going to get, go ahead and be progressive. Move forward. Help somebody out. And well, we, we're supposed to be a humanitarian service, right? It's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. So, I, mean, I think that's what You couldn't tell that by your chain of command, though. <laughs> Not with mine. No, ma'am. <laughs> I was in a position where I had some little power, I was gonna make it happen. And obviously, little, yeah, a little <laughs> lieutenant was able to do a little something here and there. And when I joined, I said, I'm not gonna sit back and be like these other folks. <laughs> I mean, I see people to the day of me, I, I really kind of just get discouraged sometimes. It's kind of like service has changed so much 
people just don't, it's like me, find me world. And that's the sad part for me. You know, like everybody's talking about, you should reach out to me. What about reaching out to them? Right. A lot of times people don't feel comfortable reaching out because how about if that person's lower ranking, you're going to say, reach out to me. Okay. Now they got to deal with repercussions of reaching out to somebody and their command getting on them because mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. The thing went outside to chain of command to a higher ranking person in the military. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then we got people that look like us that's telling other people, why didn't you reach out to me? You should have reached out to me before anything happened to you. Okay. Oh. How about that young man or woman? would have reached out to you and then their chain of command found out that they reached out to somebody that's senior than them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they keep on being insubordinate and being disrespectful to the chain of command and then they get put on some kind of i don't know getting rolled up or whatever oh you should have reached out no reach down right 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 because you're in a better position you can do that with little repercussion yeah you can reach yeah. down to them don't always wait for them to reach up to you all right <laughs> Hey, Hollywood. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Tell me something you wish you had known before joining the service. Okay, so for the Coast Guard, I wish I would have known that I was going to have to deal with continually being treated as if I wasn't equal to my counterparts. Mm. You and weren't ready for the racism? Come on, Nicole. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the racism. And- <laughs> And I'm being honest because it's still there. Like, yeah. people act like it's not, but it is. People want to act as if once they make a certain rank, they're still good. Oh, I'm good for myself. But how about the people that have something going on out here? Did you reach out to them? Did You know, I get so discouraged when I watch the service now. Like, that's why I kind of, not saying I disconnected. But I used to be so pro into everything with the Coast Guard. But I am still pro with the people that look, I'm just being honest, anybody to reach out to me, but most of it's going to be people that look like me. I know that's right. I mean, because they, they Cause reach out. Because you look like an underserved community. So you got to serve yourself because nobody else is going to serve y'all or us. Nope. Uh-uh. Ain't nobody going to do it for us better than us. So, there you go. <laughs> so... That's why I get kind of like discouraged a lot. Um, That's why sometimes I don't go to a lot of events because unless it's like us being real, I'm not going to sit there anymore and act like I got to play that tap dance. Right. uh, In the room with nobody because I didn't did that for 26 years. Right. (laughs) Tap dance for a long time. And I'm tired of tap dance. My feet is tied. (laughs) (laughs) Really? I just, I have to give it all to God because even now, like, even with things that's going on in, well, I'm done with the Coast Guard, but even with my child, it's just still yet, I don't have faith in the system. And when I watch how these people can progress but not speak out, because I know that the majority that's in our organization, when they have children that's in, they look out for theirs. But then when we look out for ours, it's a problem. Right. Right. But you need to let them be grown. No, they're my child for the rest of their life. Right. You know, but they can do it for theirs, though. And oh, it's okay. I think we've both seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that you can be a Coast Guard Nepo, baby, but it happens. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. But, yeah, it, it, it's, a bad, it's a bad situation. They don't ever want to get me in the room because if they see this book coming out, they're going to be like, Lord, I ain't going to say no names or nothing, but I'm going to have a whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i need to meet you because i gotta talk to you you gonna be like girl but yeah what that that you're cra- crazy yeah yeah i already knew that yeah yeah, yeah. i, I, I gathered that much nicole be crazy till i die but yeah. <laughs> you have hit you have hit none of your insanity thus far uh and i thank you for that <laughs> yeah, be crazy till i die <laughs> All right, Nicole, uh, tell me about a time you learned a lesson that you weren't ready to learn. A lesson learned for me was one time, okay, I was in a room with some women, Mm -hmm. and they were of color like me, Mm -hmm. and I had someone tell me, because I kept saying I was African-American. Yeah. And they said, why you're not African-American, you're black. And I'm like, (laughs) I don't need anyone to tell me what I am. 
Right, because I consider myself African American, right? Oh, yeah, and you have the right to, yeah. So it was kind of a lesson learned for me because I was sitting in the room with them, and I'm like, we all lost in the sauce because <laughs> we all came from Africa. Like we have a descendant from somewhere from Africa. Even people that don't look like us came from. So that was for me a learning lesson because for me to see someone in the room tell me what I am, I don't think that should have been there. It wasn't there. It, don't be like the people that don't look like me and tell me what I am. Okay. Right. So, right. Right. But you to be of color and tell me what I am. Now you're taking me on edge because that can be jarring. I'm, yeah. I'm African American and I know where my family came from. So don't tell me what I am. There you go. But, and then you put it out there in the multitude of people in front of people saying, telling me you're black. So now it can be a public discussion, an argument about who you are and how you should, should identify. Yeah. That, with, that. My own, with my own folks. <laughs> but then she lied to me. So- <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, you should have led with that. <laughs> Okay. Yes, that is a lesson, and I wouldn't have been ready for it either, because it would have been an argument. Everybody, you ain't gonna tell me what I am. Thank you. It was high ranking to me at the time. You ain't gonna tell me what I am. Oh man. (laughs) The whole discussion. They didn't like me after that, baby, but I was good with it. That whole scenario just sounds like a headache. (laughs) Like I'm not a Crayola crayon, but okay. Like, look, sis, if we wasn't wearing uniforms, we I would have to cash you outside. How about that? <laughs> Prime time. Yes, ma'am. Do you feel that you are a better leader than the ones you grew up under? No, I think that um, we all have a unique leadership ability. I don't think I'm better than anyone. I think you do. So let me go ahead and argue with you right there. Because I didn't like your first chain of command. And as far as I know, you've never told anybody to have an abortion. And as far as I know, you've never messed at anybody for being pregnant. So let me just go ahead and rebuttal your little statement about yourself. Yeah, you are better. Now what? Fight me. Oh, shoot. We going outside. But no, I just as far as like in as being a leader... I do think that we all have unique characteristics that we all learn from and be better as leaders, but I don't think I'm better than anyone. So I can't say I'm a better leader than anyone because I learn from everybody. Now, as far as someone that I can learn from, I can learn from anybody. I don't care if you are E1 to O10, whatever. I can learn from anybody. (laughs) I can learn from the people off the street that's people that's bums on the street because sometimes they got better stories than the people that's doing great things in their lives. So I do believe that all of us are unique because God made us all unique and we're all leaders and I'm not better than anyone. No. All right. All right. <laughs> this girl crazy. Well, yeah. <laughs> all right, fine. I mean, look, technically I can't fight you. Because we're on two different coasts, but that's the only reason, Nicole. When I see you in real life, it's on site. We're going to do. Oh, you might see me then. I might can come, girl. Let's do it. (laughs) Nicole, I just threatened to fight you, and you was like, yeah, let me visit you. I am now scared of you. (laughs) We ain't going to fight. We just going to go have a bowl. Right. Thank you. (laughs) We going to have some food and some drinks. That's... (laughs) All right, Nicole, are there any sisters in service that inspire you, past or present, and it doesn't matter which branch? Did I tell you already? If we, if we not about to have another Lisa Spotwood uh, discussion, because... Uh... Wait, did I tell you? <laughs> I already told you who it is. Not because it's a woman. 
I can't talk about the men. I do got one man. Come on. But it's a woman. Come on. Let's hear it. But it's, you already heard the woman. What is it? Admiral Merchant or Master Chief oh. Spotwood? Or is it Andrea Smith? Spotwood. 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 You know why? I told you why. Because because she's Lisa Spotwood. Yeah. And you know why? Master Chief, always- I am not going to make this episode about you because I know you listening. Because <laughs> she's always on deck. Always. Always. She's always on deck. If anybody should have an award in the leadership office, it should be her. Master Chief... Coast- Master Chief Spotwood is to the Black Coast Guard what Angela Bassett and Jennifer Lewis are to Black motherhood and Black movies. <laughs> tell, them, tell the people again. <laughs> tell the people again on here. She with is everybody's season, mother. Tell the season podcast with the, the season vet podcast who it is. Okay? <laughs> Look, whoever listening, if you got that hierarchy and that chain of command in the Coast Guard, because I'm done. Go ahead and make a whole leadership thing for who? Tell them again, sis. Lisa Mama, Spotwood. Lisa Spotwood. Let's make it happen. <laughs> but listen, if I got any uh, Marine uh, listeners, Air Force listeners, Army uh, listeners, if y'all have a Lisa Spotwood, if y'all have a black mother that just knows everybody <laughs> and is there for everybody, y'all need to let me know. <laughs> I want to know who's, y'all mo- who's y'all's mother, too. Yes, but Lisa Spotwood is a sister that inspires many of us. I love her. Oh, every, across the board. That's the thing. You can't even give her. She don't treat nobody different. That's no. the thing. Mm-mm. So she should have an award. And she's everywhere. She is. She is. <laughs> she be making her rounds. <laughs> and, oh. she, and sometimes, like she said, sometimes she don't feel good, but she still be moving. She makes it okay. happen. Yeah. That's she, what I'm talking about. Where there's a will, she, there, she'll make a way. Yes, absolutely. That's why I got respect, number one. Heck yeah. All right, prime time. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's say you were just starting your life out on your own and you were presented with the chance to join the service for the first time. Knowing what you know now, would you still join? Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, in the life that I see now, I still would join the military because it gives you like. It set me up for so oh, so many different things. I'm going to lie to you. I can do project management stuff. Like, I mean, people be like, how do you do these parties? How do you set up these events? I think what it is with the Coast Guard in the military period, because a lot of my family is military, mm-hmm. it teaches us discipline. Okay. So discipline for me is important. And understanding that it's something that can be placed in order. Because a lot of people have a chaotic life. Military, is, you're going to have a plan set up. It's always an op plan or something going on that's going to give you guidelines on what you need to do. Mm-hmm. So for me, I would say, yes, I would still join the military because to me, it's not about the military. Now, with the people, some of the people can get ghost. You heard me? But, <laughs> <laughs> some of the people can be gone. But. The military is a great organization, how it's got it's set up, because it's kind of that way in the corporate America. Think about it. It's all, everybody got a plan. Everybody got an agenda. Everybody got operation procedures. So it gave me everything I needed to be successful. So yes, I would join again. And I would tell anybody to join. Now, certain branches, I might now at this point in my life tell people to go towards beyond some services, but I would join again. Yes. Would you join the Coast Guard? Or would you suggest the Coast Guard? I love your question because I know you was going to ask me that. <laughs> um, I would tell the person the Coast Guard is a great opportunity, but be UT. <laughs> be cognizant of this because this, this is my experience and people I know that had these experiences. But if you want to, it's an opportunity for you because it is some great things that you can get from it. But Don't get lost in the sauce. Don't lose who you are. Don't let anyone change you. Don't think that you're going to mix in because you're not going to mix all the time. They'll make you feel like you're mixing, but you ain't going to mix. Right. (laughs) And they're going to use you for your worth, and then they might spit you out sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You hold your head high, and you keep it moving because you got other opportunities. Just don't get in no bull crap. Don't be out here doing stupid stuff. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then you use what you got from them and get what you need and keep it moving 
She said, use what you got to get what you want. <laughs> that, part. that part. Because they will spit you out. Yes. Yes. You know, I mean, I have a whole son that he ain't did nothing. No UCMJs, no nothing. He just went to a boat and he was young. He didn't even want to go to a boat because he's more, he's an IT person. Okay. You know, so now he's going to have to transition after doing seven years in the Coast Guard he has a legacy, whole family, me, his dad, his aunt, his cousins, that's all Coast Guard, his brother, his, might as well say uncle-in-law. And I think I told you about the family thing that we have. Like, we have a whole group of people in the Coast Guard, right? And the thing was, is I think that sometimes he might have been paid because of who his parents was. Because mm. they... Because right now, like, he's on a whole diversity and inclusion book. My son is on the picture, on the front page, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> but in the end, like I told him, he has no children. You're 28, almost 29. Don't get in trouble. Use your resources. Do what you need to do and keep it moving. Right. You know, I said, you know, it's unfortunate what happened. Like, when we, we went to his boat when he got promoted. I mean, the great mentor I told you we'll say the name say her name say her name say <laughs> it was there and my husband was higher ranking than the CEO on the boat did he get did my husband get piped on did he no he was all five but he didn't get piped on the boat wow the disrespect mm -hmm. and then when my son getting his award do you think they said anything about oh I'm me? sorry hold on let me pause just for a second uh because we have some non C see people listening um so oh, when the oh. highest ranking person enters mm -hmm. the boat it is announced for the mass to hear the masses to hear her husband was the highest ranking person entering the boat and he didn't get announced his his presence didn't get announced it's it's the same as if he had entered a room and nobody called attention all right oh, mm -hmm. yeah because even the day of they calling my son getting him all disturbed asking what uniform my husband was wearing to the boat uh, the day of. Why? The day of. We driving from Maryland down to Sulphur, which is a three-hour drive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So why didn't the command reach out to us before? They know we was my husband was still active duty at the time I had retired. You don't see him in Global? Let's be real. Don't be right. Them. <laughs> they got the same name. They got the, My son and him got the same name. <laughs> so, Let's not play games here, bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so we go on the boat. And then before we even give him my son his promotion, they're going to give him this OER. They had a three on it. Wow. The same, day, the same day he get promoted. I wasn't feeling well that day, but I still went. And I went and I said, I need to talk to this CEO because they was trying to not talk to us for some reason when we went on the boat. And normally that's not the environment that happens. When you have someone like my husband that's an 05, mm -hmm. you got an 04 retired, and then the command that was there, he was an 05, of course, but he was less ranked than my husband because of years, right? Right. And the time that he got promoted. So we owned the freaking boat. They didn't even come and say nothing to us. We just walking around. And I'm like, that's not how... The disrespect. Works. Yeah, because why? What I look like. I'm just being honest. I'm not going to play the games today. So the dude, the CEO at the boat, I hate to call him dude, but the CEO of the boat, <laughs> basically hides in his freaking quarters, right? And I'm like, no, I'm, I tapped on the boat. 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 <laughs> Coward. He was hiding in his quarters. Yeah, he was trying to hide. And I said, can I have a, can I have a minute with you? <laughs> and that was before they gave my son his little promotion thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the promotion thing for me, I didn't give a dag on about it at that point. Because I was like, first of all, the disrespect off tops. I understood the, the protocol when you come on a, a vessel. I, so I was like, what is happening here? Right. So, no, no, nothing happened. It was weird. So we walked through, we get on. He was sitting in there and never came out to say, oh, welcome to Coast Guard, you know, whatever the boat name. I ain't going to go there. <laughs> Even people know that know who I'm talking about. <laughs> they don't know about my son. I don't care. And he don't care either. Ultimately, they did not give the rental. Think if it was someone that didn't look like us. They would have been out there with the, the people at the bridge. They would have been saluting. People would have been everywhere, baby. 
Yeah. No, yeah. Nothing, nothing like that happened for my husband. <laughs> nothing. Wow. So, wow. then we don't about Nobody comes to address us or anything. We just walk in. And my son has to walk us through. And I'm like, where's your command? You know, no, nobody's saying anything. So I'm like, okay. So then he was like, yeah, they gave me my OER and look at this. And that. I'm like, oh, God, you know, as a mother now, it's hidden different. And then as a leader in the Coast Guard, too, I'm like, mm-hmm. who does this on the day that somebody's getting promoted to give right. them a negative evaluation on the day and knowing their parents are coming here? They really want to bring down the mood. Oh, they want to kill the vibe of the whole ceremony, like anything to make it less prestigious and less auspicious than what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because even when they gave him, well, back onto the boat, like, so I went to the room and I hit the door. I said, can I have a conversation with you? So at first my husband was trying to talk, but I couldn't stop. He couldn't say nothing. I went in. (laughs) I went (laughs) in mom as a African-American woman that served also treated a certain way before and also received threes unnecessarily Mm -hmm. so now it's my time to speak right i asked him i said what is what is this about well our perception is this i said i don't do perceptions right i said but perception's always been this way throughout the organization i said but it's okay i said because you're gonna have to live with what's happening here I was like, Nicole, you can't go there. Like, the day is supposed to be a day of glory, I guess. Whatever the people want to say. I don't call it glory. But um, I was ready to just get the hell off the boat. I'm just going to be honest because I was like, the hood. How you said it? Thug going to come out? <laughs> P-H-U-G? <laughs> so I was like, I got to go. I got to go. I was going to run like Kuth Kente. Because if, if I didn't, I was like, what's going to happen? Because it was triggering me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was like, now my child getting attacked again. They didn't told me not to have a child. Right. I didn't. I didn't told these people. I'm trusting y'all to take care of my child. Then you didn't take care of him. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So now he's not getting taken care of the way he should. Even with some of our own people. I'm just gonna be honest. But mm. in the end of all of that, we get on this boat. My husband ain't getting respect. I ain't getting respect. Then my child gonna get disrespected because as soon as they gave him his promotion. The most important thing was a cadet from the Coast Guard Academy. They didn't even let me and my husband say anything. Wow. Nothing. During my son's promotion. Wow. And we standing there in front of all these people on the deck. I'm like, this ain't making sense. Most people will be like, hey, these are his parents. This is Commander Burke. Right. Y'all are Coasties. Y'all are other Coasties. And y'all can even speak at your own Coastie son promotion ceremony. Nobody's. They didn't give us a platform, baby. As many civilian wives as I've heard <laughs> speak at a chief's ceremony. <laughs> I'm just being real. At, just... at a first class promotion ceremony. As many civilian wives as I've heard just like get up there and stammer and stutter over their little speeches too. But somebody let them speak, so they did it. Y'all, you a retired Coast Guardsman. You you and your husband, an, a- an active duty Coast Guardman. Yeah, he was active duty then, my husband, yes. Took the time to come down there, of course, because that's his child. Right. But then he still didn't get rid of the honors and protocol that was supposed to happen when he came on the boat. Right. On the cutter. The constant the, disrespect. Totally disrespectful. Mm. All right. And disrespect my child still yet. And then you disrespect him. First of all, I'm thinking about the overall leadership. When I, like I told you about the sea bag. Now you get them <laughs> now like, now you're going to treat them like a dirt bag. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? And he ain't did nothing to bring discredit to our service. He never had no UCMJs. He ain't did nothing. Weirdos. I'm sorry. I'm used to young people word, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't do people that way as a leader. Like, I've had people do some crazy stuff that even didn't look like me, and I was in a leadership capacity. But I'm not going to treat them that way. I'm going to have a conversation with you. We're going to say if you don't fix it the first time, guess what? Now, next time we're going to have some issues. But if it's something that's, you know, crazy, of course, um, you got to fix it then. But if it's some little things where, oh, I didn't get a call signed off, I'm not going to hold you. Look, we're going to fix that. (laughs) We can fix that easy. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I think that he was just tainted day one because they knew his parents were in the Coast Guard. 
and look, and look, he's a Coast Guard Nepo baby and also an officer and the I, Nepo baby of officers. But here's the I, thing. I've seen enlisted Nepo babies make it too far off. They enlisted parents' clout. Like, mm-hmm. the, like their parent will be like a master chief or whatever. And they come in, they're like an E1, E2, E3. They already effing up. They're already doing dumb stuff that they should have been written up for, should have been mastered for. But because their parent is a master chief, nothing happened to them. This young man came in as an officer. His parents are officers. He didn't do anything to get written up. He didn't do anything to get in trouble. All he did was show up as a black man with black parents. And Mm -hmm. here he is having to get out of the Coast Guard after seven years. That's bull. Mm -hmm. And he never did anything to bring discredit to our service. Nothing. And the only thing was that they claimed, oh, he didn't get his qual quick enough. What? Oh, yeah. And then, what? Like, yeah, the qual quick enough. <laughs> okay. So that's why y'all can't retain people. Right. You know, because even with people that just say go to cutters, like I said, even with my situation on the commands on the floor, people in the Coast Guard Academy, they get trained in summer sessions, they get out on boats, they go out and learn this stuff prior to going to the field. Right. Right. With us that's coming in that's from like deck play, like these C Spy kids, like my son was C Spy. Nice. So for him coming off, going to college, doing whatever, he don't have that background. Right. He was so in school. Some, <laughs> they don't do that there. <laughs> it needs to be changed to treat these young people that's coming off the street because most of them is going to be of minority descent when it comes to that program. Mm-hmm. But the program has changed because people don't learn how to. I knew that program too, but um, because <laughs> you see it now, it ain't it ain't got much color to it. So ultimately, I think that if they did the right thing with that program, they would be like, guess what? When these kids get ready to go in here, we're gonna go ahead and let them go and do a uh, opportunity on a boat. If we're gonna send them to a boat, let them learn about the boat first before they go to the boat. Right. Oh, I'm on the boat like that. That's just fair. That's yeah. a failure. Yeah. I mean, but our service is kind of like that. We just, we cook a cutter. They just throw you out there to the, to the wolves. <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, I'm blessed to make it where I am. And my son is blessed to make it where he is. And he's still going to remain blessed because I'm not going to. I'm not going to let him fail. I'm not going to let anybody that I know fail. If I got a, a token for you, you're going to get the token. Love it. Love it. Lieutenant Commander Burgess, ma'am, yep. <laughs> if you had a daughter or any young impressionable black girl in your life that you cared about and she was considering a life in the military, would you try to talk her out of joining? As far as military, I would not. Okay. I would not uh, discourage her from joining or doing anything she have her mindset to do because everybody has their own journey mm-hmm. and they can be a beacon of light for whatever they want to do. I would just give them advice as far as my background and what I had and tell them, look, go forward and prove to these people or whoever it is that you are better than, well, no, I ain't going to say you're better than anybody, but you can do anything you set your mind upon. I know that's right. All right. Recruitment and retention is down across all the branches and with all demographics. Black women are not excluded from that. This was true even before the pandemic. Why do you think black women are so disinterested in joining the military? Well, as far as African-American women, for me, I think that discouragement from serving is because of the unknowns. Okay. A lot of times with the unknowns is that they feel as if, oh, I can't wear my hair this way. I can't have fingernails. I can't, you know, because women want to still be women. But once you explain it, like when I was in recruiting uh, events I used to go to, and I'd be like, no, you can have nails. No, you can wear your hair this way. You know, you can wear makeup. It's just education, right? But then, two, a lot of women that I've heard get discouraged because they feel as if they're not going to be treated the same as their male counterparts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I understand that, too, because a lot of times we're not treated the same as our male counterparts. Right. So as far as being an African-American woman, think about it. You're already not of the majority because mm-hmm. most majority is in all branches. Then also you got the majority that sometimes are white women, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
No. So they're going to be okay, even though they are minority as well. But they're going to be okay because they're going to take care of each other. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to us as African Americans, we don't really have somebody that's always going to stick their neck out to be there for us. Right. And especially in the Coast Guard, right? <laughs> I'm going to talk right now the Coast Guard. Because a lot of times we all just trying to keep ourselves above water. So we're not going to reach down and pull you out the water. Right, right. Because we always worried about our own lives. Yeah. And which is unfortunate. It is, and it is. I don't care what people think. Like, I'm going to help somebody. That's what God put me on this earth to do. Okay. Um, a lot of times I don't even toot my own horn. A lot of people don't know half the stuff. Like, I've done, like, if people saw the write-up they did from that Dorothy Stratton Award, you would see it's like eight pages long. Lord, what? <laughs> Um, yeah, and I still got the memo in my, yeah. I mean, of stuff I've done for people. And people don't know because I don't talk about it because a lot of times it's not need to, I don't need to put it out to the universe because it's happening. You know, because it's happening for people. And as long as it's happening for them, I don't need to toot my own horn. I don't need to be in the front of a whatever because God knows. I don't need to be on a picture or I don't care about that public acknowledgement as long as I got grace in my spirit and I see somebody happy. You get what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm helping somebody. But some people, they love that. They love that glam now, baby. Even though I do like the word Hollywood now. I like the <laughs> There's a reason for it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of off the cuff, though. It's not in uniform. One when I serve, I like to just be, I like to ride in the streets, baby. I like to go to the club. <laughs> oh, she outside. Okay. <laughs> why that that comes in but when i served i was when you saw me in uniform i was always crisp my uniform was crisp my hair was always to the back my uniform was going to be on point my shoes was going to be and my boots was going to be shined i walked in the room sometimes it could have been intimidated because i'm tall i'm 5'10 oh shit you a stallion i'm a yeah i'm tall I'm yo <laughs> Shout, shouts out to the stallions. <laughs> Y'all are amongst my favorite group of black ladies. <laughs> and you know what's so crazy? When you're talking about Admiral Select Merchant. She's she's a stallion as well. Yes. When, when do you think her birthday is? I'm hoping it's in September, but it's probably not. When is her birthday? The same day as mine, baby. Get out of here, man. Come on. <laughs> All right, when's your birthday? April 27th. <sighs> Y'all exhausting. Whatever. Uh, yeah, of course it's, but... <laughs> Y'all exhausting, but whatever. All right, congratulations, we talk Taurus. <laughs> we talk a lot, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but we, yeah, we got the same birthday. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be next month, girl. I'll be 50. Yo, get it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Congrats. I'm sorry. Nicole, we skipped right over this one, and this is my own fault, and, and I do have to circle back on it. Okay. Tell me a war story, a story where you were tested but came out on top. Be the winner in your story. I just got to go back to when I had my baby. I, okay. I mean, that's what that mattered to me. Like, mm -hmm. all these other things that happened in my life, it was a lot, but my own personal war story was someone trying to take away something that God gave me, and that was my child. <laughs> I won that battle because I have a child now. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. That is a win. And that was a war. Mm -hmm. It was an internal war. <laughs> it, it was an external war, too. I didn't like them. <laughs> your, chain yeah. of, your chain of command was on the opposite side of you. They, they were ops. <laughs> I don't like them. And a lot of people don't know that story either, to be honest. But people need to hear it because now, thank goodness, things change. Like, people getting, like, leave more time to spend with their kid and i'm like wow i'm so thankful that things have changed it i really want to find these people though nicole i really want to find them and do bad yeah. things <laughs> i don't care if they dead nicole i'm gonna go to hell and beat the shit out of them <laughs> thing another thing we're getting close to the end here but one more thing that i did want to circle back on is uh and we're not going to brush over this because i'm very impressed you said you scored number two on the service swipe come on and tell me about it well it's kind of weird so i had when i 
first joined the Coast Guard, I did four and a half years, and that was in 1993, right? Mm -hmm. So I did four and a half years, and then I got out because I had got pregnant. And I told you the situation about all that. Mm -hmm. uh, having a child, whoop the whoop, and the people didn't want me to have the kid and go on the mask, what have you. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I need some time. So I got out for like a year. Okay. And then I came back in a year later. And as soon as I came back in, I made E4. Nice. Then six months after that, I made E5. Yo, and, you were. Yeah, I you were going back. Now, now you got me going. You, you know, sometimes people say, sometimes you need a break, but when the break get broken, you come back hard. I came back real hard. I so, <laughs> so, and it was crazy because I was just doing the service while I was there, and I ranked number two on the SK. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And then right after that, I put my OCS package in, and at first I wasn't thinking about OCS, to be honest. But me and my husband kept getting flat because he was already an officer. He was, a, at the time, I think he was a JG at the time. Yeah. So <laughs> everybody, everybody kept saying, how are y'all together? You were E5. And you know how that stuff happens. And I'm like, yo, I've been with him since I've been 17. Like, this has been my, what are y'all talking about? And I just, I of the people coming to me, questioning me, how you, how y'all married? How that happened? Uh <laughs> We married. We got a key. Here. These what? are people just being nosy because, like, that's a JG. Come on. Yeah, that part, right? So, <laughs> they was just and, being nosy. And, and back in the day, it was a big deal for some reason. I don't know what that was. It was a big. It was a big deal because it was you. That's it. Because the other people do it all the time. Right. Yeah. So in the end, I end up. I said, let me just go ahead and apply for Officer Candidate School. And I mean, I got it on the first. You know, I was. I'm gonna be honest with you. I wasn't on the top. I was an alternate. But I was kind of. It was kind of. Girl, like, you got it, and that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, and I was number two alternate. Come on. <laughs> just like number two on the service squad. I was like, what's happening? I might need to make number two, but two is one of my favorite numbers. Four, two, seven. Okay, let's go. Yeah. It, it was meant to be. You were meant to be an officer. That's that's what's well, up. <laughs> sometimes I'll be like damn I should have made chief or went to because to be honest with you I think I could have had more inspiration to be real with you like I could have had a better voice I think um because I wasn't the cookie cutter officer I was because of my background and my mouth but I'm just I could never change I'm being honest <laughs> I'm, I'm never gonna change <laughs> and why should you at this point, don't. Don't even try. Oh, I'm, I'm, it's over now. Shoot, I'm tired. Now, now y'all getting on real Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hollywood. If you were conducting this interview from where I'm sitting, what question would you have asked you that I did not ask you? I'll be honest with you. I mean, you are very good at what you do. Um, I respect everything you do because I've been watching your your show for a while. You might not know, but um, <laughs> thank you. Yes, ma'am, and I, I really appreciate what you're doing for you know the veterans and you know women that serve because a lot of times we don't get the appreciation or the accolades because some people just like I said unsung heroes. Um, and a lot of people don't know people's stories. All they have is perceptions of someone. Mm -hmm. But if they had the time to have the discussion with the person and get to know them, they would have a whole different outline on that person and be like, wow, this person is a really remarkable person. And unfortunately, they still aren't there because they can actually make greatness for the organization or wherever they are, right? Mm hmm have to give you kudos for what you're doing um i really appreciate you keep doing what you're doing i know this is gonna go because i was gonna go i'm gonna be honest with you i was gonna make it very entertaining but I, like, I don't know oh you think you didn't because <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna make it because i can be out there a little bit but you think you I, weren't <laughs> <laughs> nicole i don't think you know how to throttle yourself but thank you because <laughs> i didn't want the throttled version <laughs> This was the middle? Yeah, this was the middle. Girl. <laughs> Y'all, when I start doing live shows, Nicole's going to be there. <laughs> Y'all going to have to get get the other part, like not the middle part. <laughs> no, we need it all. I'm going to call the room open. 
Right on, right on. Thank you, thank you. Nicole, is there anything you would like to leave our audience with? Is there anything you want to promote? Is there anything you wanted to like give a shout out to or, you know, just anything you want to leave our audience with? Any parting words? So for me, uh, as far as words in the end, I would say this. Um, be true to yourself, love yourself. But most importantly, when it comes to one of my Order of the Eastern Star Sisters that now has deceased, but... One of her quotes, and her name is Maya Angelou. Come on. Oh, uh, yes, man. Come on through the room. Is I've learned that people will forget what you said. Mm-hmm. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And that's why I leave it at. Come on. <laughs> Come on. So I'm going to set it on fire right before I leave. <laughs> and did. Thank, thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander Nicole Burgess. Yes, ma'am. I do appreciate your time. I appreciate your story. Taking the time to uh, sit down and talk with me and share your story for this platform. You have a very important story. I'm glad that you took the time to make it happen. And to our audience, thank you for tuning in. Bye now. And that concludes this episode of the Season Vet Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. And a special thank you to Lieutenant Commander Nicole Burgess for sharing her story and taking the time to make this interview possible. Now, if you are or know a Black Lady veteran who would like to sit down with me and be a part of the show, please email me at seasonvetpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can call or text message me at 713-254-0970. You can also find, follow, and inbox me, the Season Vet, across all platforms of social media. At Real Season Vet on Twitter, at Season Vet Podcast on Instagram, at Season Vet Podcast on TikTok, at Season Vet on YouTube, Season Vet on Facebook. Y'all, I'm so out there, I'm even on Spoutable. That's at the Season Vet on Spoutable. All episodes of this show are available on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon, and anywhere else you get your podcast. Now, if you like what you heard, please like it, share it, rate it, and leave a good review on whatever platform you're listening to this on. And if you're hearing this episode on the day that it drops, then you're listening to it on April 29th, 2024. Today is the 32nd anniversary of the first day of the 1992 L.A. riots in Los Angeles, California. These riots began after four white cops were acquitted in the video-recorded beating of Rodney King. Today is also the 51st birthday of gospel singer Erica Campbell and the 53rd birthday of rapper Percy Miller, better known as Master P. I know it was a few days ago, but I do need to take the time to give a huge congratulations to Admiral Zeta Merchant. Admiral Merchant recently became the first black woman in the Coast Guard's 233-year history to rank as an admiral. Congratulations, ma'am. Thank you again for tuning in. And until next time, fall out.